Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So this is day four of the heated driveway replacement project. So um, I'm going to pause this time lapse right here at the beginning because I want to make sure you guys are caught up and you, you know what's going on. There's a lot that goes on here quick right at the start. So first of all, if you haven't seen the previous three days, you're going to want to go back and watch them uh, so that you know exactly what we're looking at here. So um, if you noticed at the end of day three, I stacked a bunch of insulation boards up in the driveway with Mark so that they could get started early the next morning, which was today, the 19th. So basically, I mentioned this, I think, in day two, but at the time we were doing this driveway, uh, the family and I were all on vacation, uh, not far, over the border in Canada, and I had offered to give Mark a key to the garage so that he could, you know, get started the next morning without me. Um, but we ended up just moving the insulation board out. And so they got an early start here on the 19th before I got back over the border and could get the GoPro turned on. So that's why it looks like a lot more is done because they've probably already been working for like an hour here before I got back. So Anyway, if you look up there at me, uh, kneeled down, I am cutting off the 4-inch SDR35 pipes flush with the foam board. And then you're going to see Brian uh, along the bottom here. He's going to be drilling and fastening the expansion joint right into the front face of the garage here. So just an easy way to keep it in place. I really liked how they do that. Um, Luckily, we, you know, he is drilling into a slab that does have radiant in it, but the radiant is quite a bit back, so we were safe there. Um, you'll see me in the background there in the backyard, and what I'm going to start doing is laying these 5 8 inch PEX rolls out in the sun. And, you know, yes, you're really not supposed to expose PEX to the sun for like an extended period of time, say 30 days or more, but for now, you know, when you're unrolling these things out, the warmer they are the the better i mean the bigger in pecs you go guys if you haven't worked with it before it gets wicked tough to make sharp bends and stuff so um yeah i lay it out in the sun get it nice and toasty it helped that today on the 19th here was uh i mean i want to say it was 90 degrees in buffalo the humidity was like a thousand percent and uh it was a very hot day so as you see here, Brian is laying down the 6x6 six six flat wire mesh, and I hired a couple of my uh, neighbors to come down and, you know, just paid them cash by the hour to give me a hand with this. So what we're doing here is zip tying all of the wire mesh sheets together to make a nice grid so that I can pick any one of those 6 inch by 6 inch squares and I know exactly where I am on my layout and we can start putting these 5 8 inch radiant PEX pipes down. So as you can see, we started by feeding one end of the roll down into one of the pipes that goes into the basement and we just start enrolling it. And this first method that you see here is called a counterflow loop. And you can Google this, but what a counterflow is, it's, it's a nice way with radiant heat so that you don't get a loss as the glycol cools towards the end of the line. If you were to just do what's called a serpentine loop, where you go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, the beginning of that serpentine is going to be warm. So the, you know, because it's got the hottest glycol coming from the heaters in it. And then as you kind of get towards the end, the temperature, the, the glycol loses its heat. So you could get slightly colder spots in the floor. So with a counterflow, if you see here, you know, the like this very first one we're running here, this is the supply, okay? And the supply will loop around the outside so it gets the outside the warmest, so to speak. And then we're skipping six inches in between each loop. So then what we do is once we get to the middle, I can spin it around and we start to backtrack and go backwards on ourselves and now we're just riding with the cooler return as you could call it you know the the pex with the cooler temperatures in it is in between two pieces of pex with the warmer glycol in it so that runs back and that's called a counterflow design so what we did was we estimated about like we'd roll out um you know say another 20 feet 
cut it off and then feed it down into the basement. And then we would, uh, we'd take turns, you know, I'd yell for one of the guys, Hey, run down there, grab it. Um, one of them would run down, pull it in the basement and then we mark them, um, with a Sharpie, we would mark, you know, loop 11 in loop 11 out loop 12 in loop 12 out. And I had a diagram, which I'm going to do a whole separate video on the layout for this, how I came up with this, how I designed it. I did use some computer software to give me the spacing and the number of loops, but for the most part, I just laid out these loops and how I could get them to where they were pretty much even and the same. So here what we're doing is we come out and we go all the way down the driveway and we stop at the sidewalk and we loop and we come all the way back. and. You'll see in the design, but pretty much here we're staying six inches on center all the way down until we get past where it juts off to the front walkway. Then it widens out to nine inches on center at the end of the driveway. So if you've seen any of my snowmelt videos, because, uh, you know, today's obviously March 21st of 2021. This was all recorded two years ago. The project is done. It works. Uh, I'll put a link up above. I've got a ton of time-lapse videos of it working, but you may notice that the end of the driveway doesn't melt as good. I mean, it still melts, but it's not as fast and as quick as the rest of it, and that's because the spacing is a little bit wider than the rest of it. You know, it's nine inches down there, here, uh, we took a break for lunch, and I was just sitting inside looking at the diagram, and it was like, yeah, you know, those those were supposed to be spaced out a little bit, so I just came back and, and fixed it. Um, cut the zip ties. Again, we're just using plastic zip ties to zip tie everything down to the mesh. And, uh, yeah, I, I got back at it and just started uh, started moving here, and then eventually the, the guys uh, from down the street came back and started uh, jumping in and giving me a hand. So this is all 5 eighths inch PEX. It has an oxygen barrier to it. You can't just use regular PEX for this because regular PEX actually can have oxygen, you know, come through the PEX and into the water or into the glycol. And normally that's not a problem for domestic, but for a closed loop system, you would have to use all stainless steel pumps, all stainless steel components because anything that's, that's metal um, you know, not using O2 barrier PEX will rust it out. So you don't, you don't really want to do that. Um, my loops are, were all designed to be about 220 feet long, give or take. And that's, you know, for five eighths inch PEX, six inches on center. That's what I came up with. That's also what the computer came up with. So, you know, I tried to keep them Within that, they say plus or minus 10%. So some of them might be 200, some of them might be 240, but you know, it, it's okay. And then later on, you'll see in my other videos, I actually ended up putting the longer loops all together on one manifold and the shorter ones on another manifold. That way you don't get such a wide swing between the lengths. And I can, I can go over that in another video, but yeah, so we're just following my diagram at this point and just zip tying down the packs uh again roll it out there clip it stick it down in somebody goes down and grabs it we make sure we mark it with a sharpie and we're good to go so right about here it it the storm came in from nowhere and it was pouring and we just ended up i ended up calling it for the guys um i told them you know there's no sense in all of us just sitting around waiting on the weather so they left and went home um and then once the rain stopped, like I said, I, I was here anyway. Uh, the family was over the border in Canada on vacation, and I wasn't planning on going back tonight. So I just came out myself here, you'll see, and I think I got two or three more loops done on my own um, after the rain and the, the storm that came through kind of stopped. So, yeah, I mean, looking... You'll notice in, in my time-lapse videos, if you watch some of the melt ones, you'll see that spot right there where all the PEX goes down into these tubes. Uh, it always melts first, obviously, because that's like the hottest spot of the driveway. Um, I've often looked back at this and thought, you know, could I, could I have done this 
differently and laid it out to where there really wasn't such a hot spot there. But it really, I don't think it really matters. Um, I don't think it's hurting the concrete at all. And, you know, that spot just melts. And that's where right above where those red PEX lines all go in, there's going to be stairs there that go up to the deck. So if anything, the spot at the bottom of this of the deck steps will always be clear. So you'll notice me down there at the end of the driveway. Um, if it isn't obvious from my YouTube videos, I love sharing knowledge and, and I love teaching people what I've learned doing projects like this. But I had a lot of people just driving by you know, people I don't know, some I do, neighbors, friends, and people would see this and just pull over and get out and want to come up and talk to me about it. And, you know, wow, what are you doing? How are you? I had one uh, person stop and ask, you know, how much are you charging the homeowner for this job? You know, and I had to tell, I had to tell the lady, uh, ma'am, I am the homeowner, you know, so most people uh, don't think that somebody's going to DIY something like this, but uh, really, guys, it's it's not that bad. Um, if I remember, the worst thing about this was the bending over and the being on your, you know, your hands and knees, you got to get knee pads or wear gloves, um, and it does take a little bit of a toll on your back, and then the heat. I mean, I remember these two days that we put down these loops, it was unbearably hot in Buffalo and you know it yes it makes it uncomfortable but it's actually really good because this PEX was so easy to work with with it being that warm um, you know no problems worrying about it kinking as I bent those those uh, you know 180 degree bends down at the end of the driveway to come back nine inches on center no problems at all so you know the heat stinks at some points but in other points it can really help you out too so yeah um i just figured like i said i'm home i'm here i might as well keep going get as much done as i can and uh as you can see i'm talking to somebody else down there at the end of the driveway i had a lot of people stop and just want to know about this and you know what are you doing and how are you doing it it's kind of funny but um yeah, so I think total I used about 1,200 zip ties um, on this project. If, I mean, we went through a whole bag of 1,000, I know that. And every single one of them really needs to be trimmed off because you don't want those sticking up out of your concrete. So you'll see me here uh, shortly. I think I'm feeding the last one in down in there for the day, and then I'll go back with a bucket and I'm just bending over here, working my way up and cutting all the zip ties off. So, yeah, so um, thanks for watching, guys. For those of you that are here pretty much just for the snow melt and hydronic stuff and don't care about the driveway, um, yeah, today's video and tomorrow's are going to be the good ones you're going to want to watch because this is where we are laying down the loops. And if you like this, guys, please um, like and subscribe. I, I'm a small channel just starting out here and growing, and it really does help me out when you... Uh, click that like button. So anyway, uh, stay tuned. I'll be uploading day five, you know, coming up here. Thanks for watching.